In this video, we will talk about static equilibrium. We will define first condition for static equilibrium associated with forces acting on a system, and we will define the second condition for static equilibrium associated with torques acting on a system. These two conditions arise from the fact that a system that is in static equilibrium has no linear and rotational motion. Finally, we will solve a few problems to highlight the concepts presented. As we mentioned before, a system that is in static equilibrium has no motion. It has no linear motion and it has no angular motion or rotational motion. The absence of linear motion implies the linear momentum of the system is zero and the absence of rotational motion implies its angular momentum is zero. The implications of having a linear momentum zero for a system is as follows. When a system's linear momentum is zero, which is a constant value, the rate of change of the linear momentum of the system is also zero. Now that means the net force acting on the system is also zero. So if you have an object that is being acted upon by let's say three forces F1, F2, and F3 and the system is not moving, the object is not moving, we say the vector sum of these three forces F1 plus F2 plus F3 which defines the net force on that object is zero. And in principle, if an object is subjected to, let's say, n forces, F1, F2, and so on until Fn, and the system is not moving, then we say the vector sum of all these forces that are acting on that system is zero. In other words, the net force is zero. So this is the first condition of static equilibrium. The second condition for static equilibrium comes from the fact that for a system that is in static equilibrium, its angular momentum is zero. That means the rate of change of the angular momentum of the system that is in equilibrium, that is in static equilibrium, is also zero. But the rate of change of angular momentum is quite simply the net torque, net external torque, that is acting on the system. And that should also be zero. What that means is, generally, if a system is being acted upon by n forces, F1 up until Fn, and each of these forces produces a torque T1, or tau1, all the way till tau n, then the net torque produced by these torques, which is the vector sum of the individual torques, will result in zero. And this is the second condition for static equilibrium. So to sum up, the first condition for static equilibrium, that is the net force being zero, ensures no linear motion. And the second condition for static equilibrium, namely the net torque being zero, the net torque of the system being zero, ensures no rotational motion. To illustrate these ideas, let's look at the following simple system. You have a beam, let's assume the beam is massless, being supported at that point, and we place two weights M1 and M2 at the two edges of this beam. 
at a distance x1 from the support and x2 from the support respectively. So what are the forces acting on this beam? There are three of them. The first one is the weight of mass m1, we can call it m1g, the weight of mass m2, they act vertically downward, m2g, and you have the reaction force from the support onto the beam, let's call it n. Assume that the beam does not move sideways or vertically and it doesn't rotate like this. So it has no linear motion, it has no angular motion. The absence of linear motion indicates the net force on this beam is zero. So the net force meaning the downward force must be balanced by the upward force. So we immediately write m1g plus m2g equals n. So this is the first condition of static equilibrium for the system. The second condition for static equilibrium for the system is as follows. We need to compute torques about certain axis of rotation. But in this case there is no rotation and we are free to choose any axis of rotation we like. To facilitate com computation we shall choose the axis of rotation there coming out or going into the board that is placed exactly at the support. Now we want to calculate the torque due to m1g, due to m2g and due to the normal force for a rotation about that support. The torque due to m1g, since the force m1g is going like that, the position vector is going from the axis of rotation to where the force is to the right and the magnitude of the position vector is x1 and the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees. So the torque due to force m1g is given by m1g x1. The direction of the torque can be found by using a right hand rule by curling from curling your fingers from x1 from the position vector to the force like that and your right hand thumb is seen to be pointing outward so the direction of the torque is out of the board now likewise for the torque produced by m2g we can do a similar thing the force is going down m2g the position vector is going from the support to where the force acts, so like that. The magnitude of the position vector is x2. The force is m2g. The angle between them is 90 degrees. So the torque created by m2g is given by m2g times x2 sine of 90, which is 1. And the direction of this torque is given by again curling your right hand fingers from x2 to mg and you see the direction of your thumb will be pointing into the board so the direction of the torque caused by m2g is into the board if the torque out of the board is positive the torque into the board is negative now finally the torque due to the normal force note the position vector of this normal force is zero because the normal force is situated where the fulcrum or the support is so the torque due to the normal force is zero so when we add up all the torques we got the second condition for static equilibrium meaning m1 g x1 minus m2 g x2 plus zero for the third torque equals zero. So this is the second condition of static equilibrium for the system. Let's do a problem. A diving board four meters in length is supported at a point of 1.5 meters. So that is here from the end and a diver whose weight is 550 newtons stands there at the other end, at the free end. Assume the diving board has a uniform cross-section, that means its weight acts exactly in the middle point, right there at 2 meter mark, and weighs 450 newtons. Find the force at the support, that means here, and the force at the fixed end, which means there. Let's label all the forces. The first force is the weight of the diver, which is 550 newtons. We are constructing free body diagram for the diving board. 
The second force is the weight of the board itself, which acts exactly in the middle at the 2 meter mark, and that is given by 450 newtons. The third force is from the support, the normal force that is heading upward, let's call it F sub S. And the fourth force is the downward force like that from the fixed end, let's call it F subscript F. Since the beam is in a state of static equilibrium, let's do condition one. So condition one for this beam is given by balancing the forces. So you have one upward force, three downward forces. So if we were to balance the forces, we will get the following equation, F sub S, which is the force of the support going upward, given by the sum of all the forces going in a downward direction, 450 plus 550 is 1000. Let's do condition two. Now we are free to compute the torque anywhere we like, about any point we like, so we shall choose the axis of rotation at the support coming out of the board. So we will have three contributions. So let's do torque due to F sub F. It's going to be F sub F. The position vector is 1.5 meters going like that. So it's 1.5, the angle between them is 90, sine 90 is one. The direction can be found by curling your fingers from position vector to the force. So the direction is coming out of the board. The second contribution is for 450 newtons, so the force is 450 newtons. The distance from the axis of rotation is 0 0.5, angle is 90, sine 90 is 1, and the direction of the torque is going into the board using again the right hand rule. And the same goes for the last force, 550 newtons. The distance is this entire distance right there, which is 2.5, and the direction is also going into the board. Adding these three torques up, so this is plus, this is a minus, this is a minus, and equate them to zero, you should be able to get the force at the fixed end, which is that force, that is the answer for part B, and you will end up with the following value. 1000 67 newtons and substituting this number in here we will be able to get the force at the support which is F sub S and that's going to be 1067 plus 1000 which is 2067 newtons and that solves the problem. Problem 2 you have a uniform beam whose mass is 2 kg, so the weight acts exactly in the middle right there. And it is resting on two scales, scale 1 and scale 2. In addition to that, you also have a mass of 2.5 kg being placed at 0 0.5 mark right there. So we want to determine the readings on scale 1 and scale 2 two respectively. These readings are given by these two normal forces from the fact that the beam is pressing on the scale and the scale in turn presses against the beam in an upward direction. The beam is in a state of static equilibrium so let's write down condition 1 and condition 2 beginning with condition 1. The forces balance out and they can be written like the following F1 plus F2 equals 4.5 g. For condition 2, I'm going to choose the axis of rotation at scale 1. So the axis of rotation is at scale 1 and perpendicular to the screen. There are three contributions to the torque. One is from 2.5 g, the second one is 2 g, and the last one is from the F2. F1 produces no torque about this axis of rotation because it is exactly on the axis of rotation. The torque due to 2.5 g weight is 2.5 g times 0 0.5 meters, that's the position vector, and the direction is into the board. Likewise, the torque due to 2 g is 2 g times 1, with 1 being the position vector for this force. Torque due to F2 is with the direction coming out of the board, and they should all add up to be 0. And we can solve for F2, which will give us 15.9 newtons. Substituting this in here, we can solve F1, and F1 is 
28.2 newtons. And that solves the problem.